All right, guys. So today we are back here with another episode of the Bowling Green Dynasty. This will be the third one. And here in a second, I'm going to start the game. But first, I need to clear some things up about the channel. Okay, the Madden Mobile videos, they hadn't really been doing that great lately. I'm still going to post them, but right now the app that I use to record the videos isn't working. And I went and I tried to re-download it and it wouldn't let me, so might not have Mad Mobile up for a little while, so I'm coming back to doing the Bowling Green Dynasty. And I'll probably do like some other games and stuff like that that I can record with this camera. And on other stuff, well, yep, just remembered, that's pretty much it, so... Let's get into this game, and as you can see here, both Purdue number, is ranked number 22. They've got some extremely good players, and I'm pretty sure their quarterback this year is um, Drew Brees. And I made a couple of changes to the roster. I put some of the better players in that are playing, and as you can also tell I turned the game volume off, so that'll help to where you can actually hear the commentary a little bit better. And I just realized we're playing in Purdue, so this this could be a very exciting game. I'm gonna go ahead and skip through all this stuff again. It is warming up. And we're to the coin toss. Gonna pick the lucky heads and we lost. So they'll receive and we'll get the ball after the half, which is exactly what I wanted. So. We're going to get this game kicked off. And number, I think I said kicker number 38 will begin, start the game for us. And you can already see the halfback number, 30, number 32 for Purdue. He's got some grit. I think he might, this is going to be a big game for Bowling Green. As the first play and number four is a good play by the safety, but number four just made a better catch. See, that's going to probably happen a lot of times in this game. Our players are going to be making good plays, but the quarterback and receivers will just be on target and making the catch. And we just caught a break, number 25, dropped the ball, it's going to be third down and two. I'm going to go 5-2 because I'm figuring here they'll probably run the football, so I'm going to go fire green on the defensive side. And I think I ran it to the right side too because it looks like they're, they got a jumbo formation. And I was right, and he will still pick up the first down. Number 25, you can already see that the Purdue Boilmakers are going to have way more grit than we do. And this could be bad for my Bowling Green Falcons. Harry Reid is the coach. If you didn't watch the intro video where I created everything, and number 25 gets out to the 40-yard line. That'll, probably, that'll be a gain of about 6 yards. And it'll be second down. And no, they only gave him 4. It'll be second down and 6 from the 40-yard line. As you can see, I got two right ends starting. Because my left end wasn't that great. And I had two junior right ends in the... And my backup right end was better than my starting left end. So I just went ahead and decided to put him there. So we're not going to go 5-2 this day. Yeah, we're not going to go 5-2. We're going to go 4 Yeah, I don't really. I think it's 4-4 four, four, what I call it. 4 linemen and 4 linebackers. And then everybody else is out of the box and it looks like the Falcons will get their first stop of the game. Couldn't force a three and out, but who cares? They're probably gonna be playing a defense and offense that are ten that are ten times better than theirs. 
So anytime they can get the defense off the field, be good. Made a change at the punt returner position as well. Put somebody with some speed, but couldn't get cut back out to the outside. So our first offensive play of the game, I realized, I went back and watched what happened in the last video. And running the ball was having way more success than throwing. And I believe I did the exact same thing in the last video. Tried to cut it back inside. And I just lost another yard. I went and looked at some stats as well. And the reason that you're seeing wide receiver Avian right now at the slot position is because I went and looked at his stats. And he had the one reception for 72 yards. And a touchdown, and quarterback number five maybe picks up two yards. Um, and as I've probably mentioned a thousand times, I'm still getting used to getting back used to the controls and stuff like that. On this game, and number quarterback number five goes down, the right guard picks it up, and that's going to be a loss to the lot. The offense already having some woes. It's 4th and 27. I have no clue why my kicker's in here to punt the ball. But I'm pretty sure that just said kicker number 40. That was terrible. That was a terrible kick. Hang time was good, but that's a terrible kick. 3-4, I'm going to be blitzing a lot today. Because we need to get to this quarterback. And I'm pretty... Don't know if I said this earlier, but I'm pretty sure I did. But I think that the quarterback for the Bullmakers is Drew Brees, if I'm not mistaken. So, yes. So I need to fix something real quick. All right. You got that fixed. Do they even have a back? I don't know. And it's a fumble, and Purdue catches a break. That was a great play by the linebacker or safety or cornerback to knock that ball loose, and it's going to be third down and long. Purdue could bring a blitz, so they could, I mean, stupid. And they don't, and it was perfectly played by the cornerback, number 17. And that'll be the end of the first, and there is no scoring in this game. Bowling Green playing. The defense is looking extremely good right now. But the offense is definitely having its woes. Is the first time they got on the field, it was a three and out. Um, quarterback number two, going to let it bounce out of the end zone. And they'll get the ball at the 20-yard line. Gonna go five wide again. Run a different play, but go five wide. And there's my main man, wide receiver number eight. The one who had the reception for seventy two yards and a touchdown last night. I mean yesterday. Last uh well, actually, probably about a month ago whenever I uploaded that video, but I guess you would say last week. And no running here in the game. If they're going to get anything, it's going to have to be throwing. Let's see. They'll come out in the strong formation. Looks like. They could be running the play that they ran a lot last week, or could be something different. And the quarterback fumbles for the second time tonight. And that's, this is not looking good at all for Bowling Green here. As they just give Purdue the ball and they're in Bowling Green's territory. See, this is a thing that could be detrimental to go to Bowling Green because not many times did Western Kentucky see the red zone last week. They saw long pass plays, but 
That was about it. Why they're running with Drew Brees or whoever their quarterback is, I really don't know. But we won't worry about that because we're worried about winning right now. Defensive tackle number 94. Going to line up with the nose tackle. And handoffs of the fullback, and he gets stopped right at the line. Pick up three. And it looks as if Purdue might just score, and he runs right beside the middle linebacker. But he's taken down after a short gain of nothing. Alright, so I think I ran Spy Green. So, yes, sir, that's what we need. That's what Bowling Green needed. It's a confidence builder and no come Purdue will come out here in the field goal formation. A block would be perfect for Bowling Green or a just absolute miss by their kicker. Kicker would be great. But it goes right down the middle of the uprights and the kick is good for number twenty two Purdue. As they take a 3-0 lead here in the second quarter versus Bowling Green. The quarterback is going to have to win this game for Bowling Green because every time they try to run, it's either a fumble or a loss of yards. And the, sec and the two times that it's been thrown, it's been a gain of five. It's been a gain of about... 10 or 10 to 12 yards, but there was also the sack for a loss of probably about 15 and 30, number 33 finally picked up some positive yards, but that was, that could have been bad. Bowling Green really has nothing to lose here, they get the ball back. And number 21 goes down for a loss of 14 on second down. It was a trick play by the by Bowling Green, and it didn't exactly work out as expected. He'll step up in the pocket. Number 12 catches the ball off of the deflection and it's fourth and nine from the twenty eight from Bowling Green's own twenty eight yard line. And there'll be forty eight seconds left in the second quarter for Purdue to do something. Here and that's a terrible punt. Yep. I already knew that one was terrible. And we got to see the Bowling Green's terrible punt return coverage there. As they will let the guy get out to, I would say, the this, like the 41-yard line. Intercepted by cornerback number 17. He gets killed at the 20-yard line. But this is exactly what Western Kentucky did last week to Bowling Green. And this could be good. We got wide receiver number 8 going deep. And that ball should have been picked off. Number eight kind of playing a little bit of defense right there. It's going to be second down and ten from the 19-yard line. That'll be the second turnover forced by Bowling Green's defense, I believe. And quarterback picks up six yards. And timeout called by Bowling Green here with 20, 20 seconds left. And looks as if Purdue's got one timeout and Bowling Green's got two. Third and four here. They'll get the ball to halfback, number 33. Number 33 down the sideline and he gets taken down. No timeout can be called yet. Clock's running. 
So definitely want to call a timeout now. Biggest run play of the game for Bowling Green right there. They'll definitely be going shotgun. Here is time winding down in the second quarter. It would be good if they could at least get in field goal range here. On a last second effort, five seconds going to be left in the game. And the last time out by the Bowling Green Falcons or whatever they are is called. So you know they got to be thinking it's all or nothing here. And the catch cannot be made by wide receiver number 21. And the score going into halftime will be 3 to nothing. Purdue on top of Bowling Green. Bowling Green will be getting the ball, though. And both teams have the same amount of first downs. I'm actually extremely surprised because... Oh, wide receiver number 35 takes it to the outside. He got more than he probably should have. He got out to the 25-yard line. And looks, Bowling Green going to be coming out in the ace formation. Also known as single back. Half back right up the middle. And he'll pick up about six. Bowling Green with only three rushing yards. And they'll come out here. Five wide in the shotgun. Looks like they might be bringing a blitz, and they're not. And number five breaks free, gets past the marker. Both quarterbacks have five yards rushing. And here we go. Let's see. We've got the tight end dragging under. And he will pass it to the tight end. Tight end gets the first down as he's dragged out of bounds one yard after he gets the first. Now, the quarterback can either keep it and the quarterback runs right up the middle. He keeps it and he got six yards. Well, earlier this team couldn't even get one yard rushing, and now all they can do is run the ball. Unless there's a wide open guy underneath. Oh, and that could have been deadly. I'm going to go line here on third and inches. Then I expect the quarterback sneak. No, they hand it off to the fullback, and he'll pick up a gain of a couple. Good call by Harry Reid, the coach. Two minutes and ten seconds left in the third quarter now. Bowling Green got a good drive going. And I'm pretty sure he probably threw it to their own person. Because if he would have waited another second, wider, the tight end would have been wide open for a way larger gain than that. But things happen, so. And wide receiver number eight gets, can I, don't think he got the first down. But number five, no, he didn't get the first. But quarterback number five has... Three consecutive completions. This is probably the this is the longest drive of the game. Now for Bowling Green and the fullback once again does it on third down and short. Bowling Green making the most of this drive. Got wide receiver number eight lined up in the slot. Anytime he's lined up in the slot, you need to watch out for him. And it could be going to him. And it is. And he's wide open in the end zone, but he drops it. Oh, what are you doing? Score should be 6-3 to three right now, but that was 
bad play right there by wide receiver number eight. I mean, he's not the best receiver in the league or nothing. He just makes plays. And here we go. And something that... And the fumble by the quarterback and the right tackle drops on it. And they'll try a field goal from the 30-yard line. I don't know how good the kicker is. Number 38 lines up. This is going to be a 47-yard attempt. Longest of the season. He's got to put every ounce of leg into it that he's got, and it doesn't go. The kick is no good, and the ball makers will get the ball at the 37-yard line. No, the 30-yard line of their own side of the field. A wasted possession here by Bowling Green. And the kick, the clutch kicker, who in last week's game ended up winning Bowling Green the game, can't do it here. And that's another one. That's another one for number 17. He is the most, probably, after that play right there, the most clutch player on this team at the moment for this game. If it, if Bowling Green end up, ends up winning somehow, he will definitely be the player of the game. Because Purdue is one of the best probably one of the best teams in this league right now passing the ball because of their wide receivers and quarterback and they've done for and he, that's two interceptions against them and almost getting the first is the halfback and here it'll be third and short again for Bowling Green. Let's see what they can do this time. Lining up in the strong eye formation again. With the strong formation again. The fullback up the middle and he's dropped before he can get to the line. Definitely will not be trying a field goal from there if he missed one from the 30 yard line. As the coach of this team trying to think what to do. Coming out goal line on fourth and inches. Hands it off to the fullback and he will get the first down. The drive survives for the Bowling Green Falcons after the interception by the cornerback, number 17. Wide receiver number eight in the game. And should have been picked off by the cornerback. That was a bad decision by the quarterback. But right now, the only thing that really matters is this team needs, Bowling Green needs to sur make, sustain a drive and at least, I'd say, get to the 20 yard line to give their field goal chicker, chicker, their field goal kicker a chance to tie this game up because. Yeah, we kind of, we all saw what happened a second ago, so yeah. They want to get as close as they can. Purdue is one of four on third down. Number eight wide open and he batted the ball down. What are you doing, son? You're wide open. Kicker number 38 lines up. Getting ready for the kick. He's done miss one in this game. And kick is up. And the kick is good. And the Bowling Green Falcons have tied the game at three in the fourth quarter. This might be one of the worst offensive games ever in the history of the league. As both teams have only scored three points and we're in the fourth quarter. It should be 10 to 
to three right now. His wide receiver number eight has dropped a ton of passes today. One of them in which he was wide open in the end zone. Here's what Bowling Green needs to do to win the game today. They need to force another turnover and run as much of the clock off as they can and then get down and kick another field goal like they did last week. You can see this kicker can kick from his long on the year is a 44 yarder because that's what that last kick just was. And Purdue hands it off to the their halfback twice in a row. And this is not good here for Bowling Green because Purdue is running clock off and driving up the field at the same time. They need some extremely good coverage. Here on this play and they get a break is number 82 just drops the ball even though he would have been running for a long time if he wouldn't have. Defensive tackle, number 94, lines up as the nose tackle. And that's two straight drops by the Purdue wide receivers that are supposed to be some of the better ones in the league. This is one of the better quarterbacks too, so it's not like he's just messing up. Number 71 lines up as a nose tackle this time. And they will force a stop. It's 4th and 10 with a minute 55 seconds left in the 4th quarter. Nobody wants to see this game go into overtime. I mean, last week this same thing happened. And I said our punter was bad, but I might need to check out this Purdue punter and get take him off scholarship because that's some pretty bad stuff and Bowling Green OW! will we'll come out said OW and fumble the football and this just got ugly for Bowling Green. Halfback number 33 could be seeing a, the bench if Bowling Green does get the ball back. Number 17 needs to have another clutch play. And I think that was who was guarding that man right there. And that didn't look very clutch to me. Tackle number 90, the, the tackle number 94, lining up, they're going no back. And number 27, this is not good, all Purdue has to do is kick a field goal and they win the game with a minute 21 left here in the fourth quarter. thing that Bowling Green needs to do right now is get a stop. Get off the field. Force a field goal and hope your offense can do something in the final minutes of the game. Third and two. Bowling Green caught, I mean, what's their face? Just caught a timeout. And looks as if they're getting success running. Coming back out in the 5-2. And they stop him short. 53 seconds left. Fourth and one. And Bowling Green defense might, if 53 seconds left on the clock, if Bowling Green can drive back down the field and score... This could be a very good start to their season because they could get put back in the top twenty. They could get put in the top twenty-five if all they gotta do is get down the field to the twenty-seven yard line. If we if we have seen their kicker can kick field goals from the twenty-five yard from the twenty-seven yard line as he did earlier 
It was a 44-yard field goal. If they make any mistakes on this game, on this drive right here, that's it. And number 10 gets open. They need to be going quick. Need to be going extremely quick here. And that was a terrible throw by the quarterback. He should have been running for a long time. Twenty-three seconds left in the fourth quarter. It'll take a miracle. But it's been done before, and he... Don't think they'll call it out of bounds. A timeout called here by Bowling Green. Bowling Green would love a touchdown, but a field goal would put this game in overtime. And number 33, breaks some tackles, gets out to the 20-yard line. Bowling Green will call second time out of the game. They'll probably go to the end zone here uh, real quick. Uh, performance matters the most. Old Spike. And number 35. And I mean, you would want a touchdown here out of Bowling Green. But, I mean, if you go into overtime, there's still that one little chance that you'll win the game. Number 38. This is a terrible angle for their kicker. is up. The kick is good and we're going to overtime here. Bowling Green 6, Purdue 6 at the end of 4. Perfectly played drive by Bowling Green. If there would have been a little bit more time on the clock. And Bowling Green wins and they will choose I'm going to choose defense just because the way Bowling Green's offense has been playing lately. This could end up going good for them. As long as Bowling Green doesn't have any negative... ...and no turnovers. They could win this game. Because... Solely based on how their defense was playing at the end in the fourth quarter, but that wasn't good. And there's your old Fox report for Bowling Green. And stopped maybe a half an inch short, second and inches from the one yard line. You know Bowling Green is not happy right now. And there's a touchdown for Purdue. This could be a very long overtime. Because if Purdue, well, if Bowling Green can score a touchdown, which... Neither team has been able to do all game, but Bowling Green should have actually won this because their wide receiver opened in the end zone and dropped the ball.
They'll go to the speed option, and it doesn't work this time. Perfectly played by the man himself. Don't know who it was, but it's just the man himself. And the man himself, number eight, catches the ball, and he's down inside the ten, close to the six-yard line. In the field goal today, the red zone percentage for the team has been 50%, and the fullback cannot get in. But there's a play called quarterback sneak, that unless he fumbles... Should take this game into second overtime. This has been a very eventful game for Bowling Green. Never before have they ever played in a game like this, especially against the right team. I'm sure Bowling Green's probably had some good teams. But this one has a heart of a lion and they are not going to go down without a fight and we're going into second overtime that's the end of the series and Bowling Green will get the ball first this time so they can't mess up and they just threw an interception all it takes now for Purdue is a field goal. Wait a second. Kind of confused, but Bowling Green has got to get a stop, and that's not what you call getting a stop. Either way, if Bowling Green loses this game, they played their hearts out. The quarterback killed them. Could be seeing a little bit of that backup sophomore quarterback this week. And you know here, uh, if you're Bowling Green, I would actually let the person get the first down. Especially if they come out running the football. Because then there could be the chance that they throw the football. And you can intercept it if they're throwing the ball. So I would actually let them get the first and they don't. And that's going to be the game here. Because this field goal kicker doesn't miss, especially from 23 yards out. That's just a 40-yard field goal. And that'll be the end of the game, guys. Kick is up and the kick is good. And Bowling Green has lost their first game of the season 16 to 13 and I'm out